Hey everybody, welcome to Moment of Clarity. Today I'm talking with Susie Dawson, one of the creators of Panquake, the social media platform that could change everything if we're lucky. Yeah, so uh, let, let's get into it. Let's dive on in. This uh, You've heard me speak about Panquake. Uh, many of us have been talking about it. It's still in development, so don't worry. You haven't missed it yet. It's not, it's not out quite yet, but we keep finding out new developments, new uh, new points. It's hitting as it as it gets closer to uh, being released. And so uh, Susie asked to, to come on and talk about it a little more. And and I got to see a preview the other day. So here is uh, Susie Dawson. Hi, Lee. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being here. I like the new hair. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm thinking of going blue soon. I'm not. I'm, my, mine's going to be blue soon. I think. Oh, really? <laughs> I think you look great. So, as long as, uh, as long as you don't get a red hat, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, that'd be bad. Uh, that'd be very Papa Smith. <laughs> so, I've had you on before, but since that time, we've seen a lot of new developments with Panquake. Uh, everyone can see how to spell that because it's now behind you on the uh, on the <laughs> wall there. And... And I want to talk about I want to talk about the new developments. I also want to talk about the the suppression. That's it's kind of amazing to see something be suppressed before it's even released. But I think we're already seeing that. So let's start with like developments since January. I think maybe that was around then was the last time I had you on. Uh, that the developments that have come along and and what you're excited about right now. And I guess for those who have no idea, maybe quickly explain what Panquake will be. So Panquake is a next generation short messaging service. It's similar to Twitter in that you get to send short messages to a timeline, but it has a bunch of new functionality that just blow Twitter out of the water in terms of your ability to gain greater social reach, but also to have faith in uh, the content that you see, to know that it's what you actually want to see. It's blockchain technology, so every interaction and every public post is indelibly recorded onto the web in a way that you can prove it hasn't been manipulated or censored or messed with. We have no shadow banning. We have no horrible moderation algorithms. It's totally opt-in in terms of content. If you haven't chosen to see content, you're not going to see it. Like I logged into Twitter today and literally my entire timeline was stuff from accounts that I don't follow and that hadn't been shared by someone I do follow. My entire timeline, top to bottom. My favorite is my favorite is when content. I my favorite is when I go to check like you know your stream on Twitter or you know Graham Elwood's or someone I like, and the top post is an ad from like Raytheon or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like suggested content, suggested accounts to follow. It's just it's ludicrous. Um, and we've just seen all of our friends and all the best content creators consistently being suppressed and silenced and shadow banned and censored by big tech platforms. And when you like the time is right for us to create a solution before it's too late and we're completely silenced and you know lose these relationships that we've forged over so many years. Um, and Panquake is how we're doing that. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so talk about what point in development it is right now and uh, maybe what you've seen since January. Sure. So I'm super proud of how fast we've moved because I didn't expect that we would ever get this far this quickly. It's only been, what, four, nearly five months since we launched the um, idea, the concept of Panquake. And in this really short time, we have come very, very far, both in the development of the front end and the back end. And that is because we've had incredible support from the public throughout. So we needed to raise $50,000 as a benchmark just to establish the business because we needed to set up in zones outside of the US where we would be uh, somewhat protected from US lawfare, et cetera. Um, that was expensive, but we raised that money inside of three weeks. We thought it was going to take two months. We raised it in three weeks. And then since then, we're up to 127000 of our $167,000 target for our, our build of our beta um, product. So yeah, a, lot, a lot of people might not realize that it takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of human hours. It takes a lot of effort to program and build something this extensive, uh, especially one that can't be banned or stopped. 
And uh, and so, yeah, unfortunately, that takes money. I know everyone likes to think that uh, good stuff is all free, but uh, it, unfortunately, it takes a lot of work. Well, we're running on a shoestring budget. Yeah. Um, compared to a commercial build, this would be a multi-million dollar build for any company in the world that even attempted to build something on the scale of what we're doing. Um, and it would take several years. And we are working twice as fast as I've seen any of my commercial projects move. And that's because the people involved in the project are so dedicated and so determined to get this out to the public. So we have easily achieved eight months development progress in four months. And that's been purely because of the, the love and the sweat of the, uh, we've got 30 people actually working on this project. It's an enormous team. And now thanks to the support of the public, we have six part-time paid uh, staff and four full-time paid staff working every single day to get this to you. Um, so the 127,000 we've raised um, has easily got us five or six hundred thousand dollars worth of build value in terms of development. Um, but we do need to hit our 167k target ASAP to fund the remainder of the build. And the faster that we hit that target, the faster I can push this build. And the longer it takes us to hit that target, the more time I have to spend, you know, marketing and advertising the product instead of being back there with my developers building, which is definitely where I prefer to be. Um, much as I love your company, Lee, much as I love coming on these shows, I you're, do you're, you're have saying you fucking can't stand, you fucking can't stand speaking to people like me, and uh, you'd like to be doing other things. I get it. I get it. I love talking to you. You're a very, <laughs> very quality human being, and and I'm honoured to talk to you sincerely. Um, and, but I yeah. am a geek. I am a geek at heart. Absolutely. Um, and I have so much fun building this product. And uh, with the conversations we have when we're in development, we we sit around thinking up ways to not do what corporations do. Like we have conversations like, how can we make sure that we don't um, collect the browser fingerprint of the user who's connecting to our web service? Like how do we make sure that we don't collect what type of device they're using? We don't wanna know if they're on an iPhone or an Android or a, you know whatever OS they're using. And we, uh, for us, for most companies, it's a process of uh, building a product that will ingest data. For us, it's a process of building a product that will consciously exclude data. So at every point in the system, we are engineering and architecting it in a way in which we don't capture user information. We don't, because we don't capture it, we don't store it. And because we don't store it, it can't be like leaked onto the internet in some great data breach like happens to Facebook all the time. It can't be bought by a corporation or sold to a big data company. It can't be seized off centralized servers by government. We have no centralized service. And we've worked out ways where even in the payment process where people are paying us, because we do charge a just basic flat fee of every single registered account, five bucks a month, that's it. Never more, never six, never seven, just five bucks a month. And we, even when someone is going to pay their five bucks in our system, we've engineered a way that we don't ever capture any payment information. We don't know what type of credit card you used. We don't know anything about you. We don't know your full name, nothing. You sign up for a Panquake account without putting a mobile phone number or an email address in. You just pick a handle and a password and we give you a, uh, a passphrase, a security passphrase and a little token that you can download, which you can use to recover your account if you forget where, where do I send? Where do I send the blood and semen sample though? <laughs> Sorry, no biometric collection either. <laughs> That's definitely not our thing at all. Um, we are about protecting our users and protecting our network and protecting ourselves as well so that we can continue to provide that service to our users without having to worry that um, the government's going to come after some data that we hold. So we just make sure we don't hold anything. And the blockchain being publicly accessible means that everything that you are contributing in terms of what you post onto your timeline or which user you follow or who you click like on, that's all public information anyway. So we've got it so that everything is either public because you intend it to be public or private and never touched, collected or stored by us. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big highlight of it for me. And I think a lot of people is just that it's not collecting your data and that it's not owned by advertisers. Uh, these, are pivotal, these are pivotal things if you want anything to remain free and fair and to actually uh, you know, allow information to get out there without being suppressed. 
Uh, you, you often mentioned that Julian Assange said we'd end up in a filter verse of one. Yeah. And it, it feels like we're getting closer and closer to that. Yeah, I logged into my filter verse of one today when I got into Twitter and saw content that I had no interest in from top to bottom of my timeline and not a single message from someone that I actually wanted to see content from. That is literally the filter verse of one. So speaking of your your Twitter timeline or people's Twitter timeline, I'd talk about some of the suppression that you guys have already been facing, even though Panquake's not even live yet. Uh, the attacks really are already coming. Uh, I, I tried to be, well, I was in a, in a, a kind of live stream event that you did, but it didn't end up being live streamed, did it? Well, yeah, from literally the day of our launch, we faced unprecedented amounts of censorship and sabotage externally. Um, and by particularly by big tech services. Yep. We were unable to broadcast live to YouTube at all. Uh, they literally just scrambled our feed on there. Like the packets weren't dropping on our end. We had backup machines. We had multiple people working on it. It was not on our end. It was on YouTube's end. Um, it was completely impossible for us to host any event via YouTube. Um, we have had all of the Panquake related Twitter accounts suspended, blanket suspended twice now. And then when we create a big fuss, they unsuspend them, but they just take us out of the equation for a little bit and let us simmer um, periodically. We have had massive DDoS attacks launched against our domains and also against our hosting provider, which is in Iceland. We host in Iceland on geothermal. So we are not like some energy hogging Bitcoin mining company, far from it. Our chain, our blockchain model is actually called Proof of Authority. It's from the Proof of Authority school, which means we don't, our uh, blockchain doesn't require mining at all. So that's totally a relevant issue for us. Um, so our hosting provider has been attacked as well as our web infrastructure. Fortunately, we've, we've withstood it. We're lucky to have some of the foremost experts in the world in terms of tech privacy and security uh, working for us. Um, and we've had oh, relentless smear campaigns, smear campaigns against Panquake, smear campaigns against myself personally. I mean, you know, I could have made my pug be like the, the mascot for Panquake and stuck him on live streams and he would have been smeared. Like, that's basically <laughs> just how it goes, unfortunately. If you're going to get up and advocate for something that undermines giant corporations and governments and surveillance, then you're going to have people do everything they can to try and ruin not just your product and project, but also your personal rep reputation. It's like the icing on the cake. Um, and yeah, it's just who knows what they've got in store for us next. <laughs> We've certainly done everything we can in terms of sustainability planning to make sure that when we deliver this product, we will be... Um, uh, I won't say untouchable, it's impossible to say it would be untouchable, but we've gone to really extensive lengths to make sure that the business structure underlying the product is completely sustainable and sound, and that the product itself is also sustainable and sound. It will be mirrored all around the world, all over the place. So um, there will be no one place that can take it out. And, you know, I think some people might wonder, like, well, why is this so, why would this need to be attacked? Why is this so uh, scary to the to the ruling elite, which are connected to the big tech platforms? And, you know, it has to do, yes, with the fact that it's not collecting all your data, so it's disruptive to their business models. But it also has to do with the fact that things like, you know, my information or any independent journalists that are disruptive to the kind of propaganda of governments, you know, around the world, uh, things like WikiLeaks, will be able to have a voice again and not be suppressed on Twitter. And so I think that's what makes this uh, something that is, is an adversary to the big tech platforms. You, that's a really intuitive comment from you, actually, Lee, because what we represent is um, a threat the size of the sum total of all independent content creators because we are offering a lifeboat to all content creators. So you think about how much they hate Jimmy Dore, how much they hate the Grey Zone, how much they hate you, how much they hate other major content independent content creators and 
you put that all together in a big pile and that's how much they hate Panquake because we're offering you a future where you will have total freedom of engagement with your audience, where your audience will always see your content, provably see your content, where you have amazing new functionality that allows you to send a message to all of your followers at the same time, which we call Thunderquakes, where you have the ability to automatically share content that you know you want to be on your timeline onto your timeline, even when you're offline. When you're in bed asleep, you can be automatically sharing Redacted Tonight content onto the Lee Camp timeline just by clicking one button on Panquake. So, the you know, the words, oh, I think it was Peter Lavelle said to me, you're on the radar. <laughs> said, yeah. Panquake, you're on, you're on the radar. Um, they've got your number, they know what you're up to, and they want to stop it. So, yeah, you can expect relentless attacks on us, but we're not going to stop. We need this. All of us need right. this. We need a lifeboat away from our communications and relationships being completely controlled by people who do not have our best interests at heart. Even to the, it's really the polar opposite. Um, they want to control us. They want to decide who we can talk to, who we can be friends with, who we can maintain a relationship with. I have a browser tab open on my browser right now. It's a Wikipedia page. And it's called social network analysis. And I strongly suggest that you go to Wikipedia and you type social network analysis. There's an entire page here. It's all about the ways that they use your social media footprint to analyze you, your family, every person you've ever been in contact with in your life. If you've heard about Snowden's um, permanent record, this is all tied into that. And what we are doing is we're threatening a piece, a big chunk of the mechanisms by which they create that permanent record for every user. That's Panquake is out, out from having, you know, a big chunk of our permanent records. And so that's why we need your support. We're a hundred percent crowdfunded, a hundred percent people powered. And we're now halfway through a, a build that's the most important stuff we've built since WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks Secure Dropbox, if I'm going to be honest. It is the most important since then. And um, we need your support. And I should mention, when I was going through my list of all the attacks we've faced, what people don't know, but we'll have a press release out about in the next few days, is since May the 13th, PayPal have not been pro uh, releasing our donations to us that people really? are donating to us via PayPal. We are now officially having money withheld from us by PayPal, which was 40% of our donation income really? that, we now, that we're now not receiving. Yeah. So... You know, who were the last people PayPal went after? I know. The, the last ones that they cut off was WikiLeaks, or at least the last one exactly. people talked about, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah the guns uh, are out, so we, we need your help. Well, I hope, I hope uh, you can sort that out pretty quickly. Uh, Carol, who's uh, viewing, uh, one of the viewers, uh, has the question, how is this different from Mines? Uh, mines, I, I mean, look. I'll give you my personal impression. I can't speak for Minds. I consider Minds to be more of a Facebook-style platform. It's more of a blog-style platform. Yeah. Um, the way they have their little communities and the whole layout is uh, its visually completely different from Minds to Panquake. Um, and actually, I mean, you've seen... I'd actually really like to hear from you, Lee, because you you're one of the few people on this planet who's actually seen Panquake. You know what it looks like. You know visually what it looks like. You know what the layout is. So uh, we don't have like a collection of pages that you move through on Panquake. We have a single view, single page dashboard and you never leave that dashboard. And you have a timeline in the middle of that dashboard and that timeline displays what you want it to display. And we have content filters that you can sit there and click on and off to swap between what you want to be displaying in that timeline. And of course we have a search function so you can search the network for new content as well. Um, so I think Minds is a, just a totally different model to us. I know Minds has like, you can pay to boost content, that type of thing. This is totally different from Panquake. Panquake has no boosted content. Money doesn't buy you reach on, on Panquake. Yeah. I was on Graham Elwood's show last night and we're talking, we're using Boeing as a use case. And we're saying like, Boeing, if they create an account on Panquake, can only pay $5 a month. They can't pay us more money to get more access or more features. Boeing will have the same ability to build a following, an audience, and to reach that audience as Lee Kemp does or as Graham Elwood does. Right. And if you don't follow Boeing on Panquake, 
you will not see their crap. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, and that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great point because that is one of the big things that has altered YouTube is that, you know, me or Graham or Jimmy Dore, we built up audiences, you know, naturally, organically, uh, finding people that liked our content. And then when the, you know, mainstream media and the corporations that own them realized that, you know, CNN's not doing well on YouTube, but Lee Camp or Jimmy Dore is, uh, that was not good for them. And it, they clearly decided it was time to stop that. And they were able to pay and to alter the algorithm, et cetera, so that YouTube now funnels everybody to CNN or MSNBC or whatever. If anybody watches one of my videos, it then auto plays a like mainstream me media video after mine. So basically, the ownership funneled everybody to the uh, old establishment corporate channels because you know the, the, the organic re reach that independent journalists had created was was dangerous. Absolutely, and I've seen that happen to you on Facebook as well. I mean, you had like a quarter million plus followers years ago, and, and the reach you had is extremely. It was huge. Same with WikiLeaks too, and you see the same thing with their WikiLeaks Facebook page, etc. Um, they are going for the throats of independent media. That's just a fact, um, and they seem to just sit around and cook up more and more ways to do it. And it's time that we start cooking up more and more ways for us to have the reach that we deserve and the engagement with our audience that our audience wants us to have because our audience um, are following us and then being nefariously unfollowed from us. This happened to me so many times and it's there's real damage happening to people's relationships and there's damage happening to people's businesses and people's livelihoods and it's not okay. It's not okay for the control structure to just, you know, play this for the 1% and to hold with everyone else. And so we, the 99%, actually have to chuck what little resources we have left from all of the theft that's been going on through the years and actually start building around these guys while we still while we still have a chance. All right. So I don't want to use up all your time. So if if people like what they're hearing, and I think most will, uh, how how can they help you and, and what can they do between now and uh, when it goes live? So panquake.com. Join, hit the join, sign up and join, get an early access code so that you can be one of the first people onto the platform. Donate to support the campaign. Donate, please, via Stripe and not via PayPal, because right now if you donate via PayPal, they are holding onto that money and not releasing it to us, which is particularly uncool. Um, and we actually have a whole very cool, I think I mentioned it to you the other day, and this is a bit of a spoiler alert because the official promo hasn't come out yet, but we are also launching um, a new content service of our own um, to recap all of the week's news, particularly around big tech censorship, manipulation, data breaches, privacy, security, surveillance, just the things that really, the topics that really relate to Panquake, just tracking that news on a weekly basis, mainstream sources, um, bringing it all together and delivering it to our audience. So you can expect to see that hosted by Taylor Hudak. Um, called Talk Liberation coming out in in across the next seven days. Cool. So uh, panquake.com is where people can go, right? Yes, panquake.com. Please support us. Help us get through this build. As soon as we hit this 100% target on um, the build uh, fundraising that we're doing right now, we get to move into delivery phase. I get to plan the delivery phase and then we're, we will be fundraising just for the actual release and to hire on the moderators that we need to support the user base and to get this product across the line and into your hands. So it's very exciting times. Get behind us. Susie, I think you could you could do this fundraising much quicker if you just partnered with like Amazon. I think they could really fund it. And uh... I'm not going <laughs> to lie, you know, not, not from Amazon, not from the corporations. They don't <laughs> want to help us anyway. But um, I have had offers for investors and we've said no, flat out no. We will not take money from private investors, venture capitalists, anything like that. We're not interested in that. This product was not about making money. We didn't build our model based on how much we thought we could get away with charging. Totally opposite. We said, what's the minimum that we can charge? Level playing field for everyone to be able to sustain this network, support the product and give a really high quality user experience. Um, that was, we did, yeah, the total opposite. It wasn't how much can we earn. It was what is the bare minimum we need to. And then that is the baseline that we set. So um, yeah, this, really, and, uh... this really is a labor of love. I'm really... 
this really is trying to just create that lifeboat that everyone from WikiLeaks to Lee Camp to Jimmy Dore can get on and just guarantee that they aren't going to be silenced in the future. Uh, and someone asked whether they can donate Bitcoin and Kimber in the comments said yes, right? Yeah, pancake.com, hit the crypto tab. We have like 12 different cryptocurrencies that you can donate. That would be huge. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Well, Susie, keep us updated. Thanks a lot oh, for being well, here. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much for your support. You've been amazing. Absolutely. Take care. Bye. Talk soon. All right. That was Susie Dawson. And, you know, to, to hit on a broader note here, I think that as we see these crackdowns, this suppression that I've been facing, that so many of us have been facing, you know, Graham Elwood is completely demonetized on on YouTube. And we're, it, we're just being and it's not even some of it's not even that edgy content, you know, like Mother Jones magazine, a progressive magazine that's they're not mainstream media, but they're also not like radical revolutionary, they've been heavily hit. Their views are, have been, you know, cut by uh, massive amounts. So we're seeing this level of suppression against so many. And the the answer is to keep, yes, keep using the, the platforms you have. I'm still on YouTube. You know, you've got tens of thousands of followers or subscribers or hundreds of thousands. Uh, then you've got to keep using those platforms. But build the alternatives. Build the ones that will disrupt the ones that are crushing us while you continue to use as much as you can, the ones that are tr fucking trying to make you go away. And so I will keep using YouTube. I will keep using Twitter, but let's build the alternatives. And Panquake is one of the alternatives. So if it can, you know, be built up and, and, and go viral, uh, uh, that would be incredible. Another example of uh, you know, outside of uh, outside of just social media platforms, that's creating disruption is the movement for a people's party, right? The people's party. Uh, that's another one that is outside of what is allowable, outside of the Overton window. That's creating disruption in our two-party sham system. And so it's like support the disruptors, motherfuckers. And I don't mean you, other people. Uh, cause that's, that's the only way to, to upend this crackdown that has been ongoing. And we kind of knew it was coming, right? You don't, you don't see fucking uh, Occupy, Bernie Sanders, Black Lives Matter all blow up at the same time. And the oligarchs not sit around in their, uh, you know, quiet little meetings. I don't know if they still do them or in a dark boardroom. I think they probably use dark zoom calls now, but sit around and go, Hey, how do we stop this? Okay. Well, let's, let's partner face. Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, and Twitter with the Atlantic Council. You know, basically NATO will sit in on every decision that Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Reddit make now on. And, and so you see how it works. And, and we, you know, we're witnessing it day in and day out. But you got to build up the alternatives. And Panquake is one of those. That's pretty much it for now for, uh, for this episode of Moment of Clarity. But please uh, do two things. One is right now, if you're in the United States, Get out your phone, text the word redacted to 33777. It, all it does is sign you up for the email list. It's completely free. If you text that word, it'll just ask for your email and that's it. Totally free. Just text the word redacted to 33777. The reason I need you to sign up for the email is because we are so suppressed. I mean, we lots of times people aren't even told about our videos. Our videos are not shown to people. So the best way still for me to get in touch with you is via email because it's a slightly less suppressed. So please do that. And the other thing is, uh, is yeah, all these donations in the super chat will go to people who are struggling and uh, check out the podcast, Government Secrets. Check out the new Redacted Tonight at LeeCamp.com. You can always get the new Redacted Tonight. So really, because we are so suppressed, because they're not going to tell you about our videos, you have to make a habit, and I hope you will, of every week going to LeeCamp.com, maybe Friday night, maybe Saturday watching the new Redacted tonight, catching up on all the new good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Keep fighting.